Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabriella. I make videos about astrology, fragrance, self-care, mental health, actor life, and whatever else I feel like talking about, so stick around. Uh, today, we are gonna do a video that has been highly requested the past week or two since I've posted a few uh, fragrance videos, and a lot of people are here for astrology, but uh, fragrance is probably my favorite thing to talk about, actually. Um, and I've, I've spoken about it before, I am just a total fragrance junkie, more than bags, more than shoes. I mean, I don't even have a problem with bags and shoes and stuff like that. Um, more than makeup, I just love skin, um, <laughs> okay, I love fragrance. So uh, yeah, a little bit about me, I'm 25 years old, I live in Los Angeles, I'm a performer. Um, I guess this sort of goes into what kind of fragrances I like to wear because I don't have a lot of you know work appropriate or things like that because I don't work in an office. Um, otherwise, I work from home doing YouTube and uh, what else? Um, I started getting, I mean, I've always been into perfume, but uh, only recently, probably since I moved to LA five years ago, did I start sometimes investing in more expensive perfumes. Now, I don't have the most expensive, most exclusive collection, I know that, and I'm actually totally cool with that. I have celebrity fragrances, designer, super cheap Target fragrances, I've got Victoria's Secret, like I am not a snob about it. I love fragrance, but I am not a fragrance snob. So, um, otherwise, my taste, I love sweet, I love gourmand, I am not into floral, um, I get headaches quite easily from like very, uh, very cutting floral fragrances, and I'm not really that into fresh. It's gotta be, you know, I'll just give you an example. If you bring Dolce & Gabbana light blue around me, we're gonna have a problem, okay? Number one problem is the migraine. Number two problem is why are you bringing that around me? I know some people love that, but I'm saying that's like, that's where I draw the line, okay. So let's get into it. This over here, I have this little rotating perfume cart that I got on Amazon, it's double, like double tiered I guess you can't see it but that's where I put all of my current perfumes that I'm using it goes on my dresser in my bedroom my dog is exploring back there um, it goes on my dresser in my bedroom and I really really love it um, and then everything else I put in this Chanel box that um, a bag came in and I'm only gonna share my bottles. I'm not gonna share my samples. I did that, I have so many samples, and I did that in the video where I was switching my winter to my spring fragrances, and it was just too much. It's like truly too much. So, here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna start. Byredo Rose Noir, I hate this fragrance. I mean, it kinda smells nice right now. <laughs> Why didn't I like it? It, I don't know. I On me, I just like, yeah. I have worn this probably once when I received it and I just, I don't like it. Also guys, oh my goodness, forgive my nails. I've been doing my nails at home and they're not gel and they're chipping. Oh my gosh, this is actually really bad. I hate that. Please ignore that. Or just forgive me for not painting my nails for you. Lolabo Rose 31. I really like this. Um, oh, it reminds me of a very specific time in my life. So my brother actually originally got this and then he didn't like it. It was too feminine for him or something. He literally, I think, just bought the whole Lalabo store because <laughs> um, he literally has every one of their fragrances. But this is great. I mean, it's heavy. I would never wear this in the summer or in any kind of warm weather. You could. I think when I bought this, I did. Or when I received this, I did. But yeah, I mean, it's sort of like a leathery rose almost. I don't really smell leather, but it's very, it's very unisex. And uh, yeah, I like this. I can't say I wear it very often though. Zara Oriental, this I bought years ago when I first moved to LA. Oh my gosh, at the Grove, the Zara at the Grove. This is delicious. Honestly, people love Zara fragrances, huh? This is amazing. And I think the bottle is like quite pretty too. This is so good. This is creamy and mature, but not old. Very sexy. It's nighttime to me, but not because it's it's not heavy. It's just, it is very sexy. Maybe unless you were going to like a very nice brunch or like a bridal shower or something where you're looking very elegant. Otherwise, this is not like a walking around the farmer's market fragrance. To me, this is, um, you know, st 
steak dinner date or like this could be powerful CEO. I'm gonna do an occasions for my perfumes video in a moment, but I love, I, I adore this fragrance. This is wonderful. Actually, do I wanna bring it out? I kinda wanna bring it out. Why not? Tom Ford Oud Wood. I had a phase where I literally wore men's cologne. I also had a phase as a child where I only wore boys' jeans and like boys' clothes. It's just a thing, and it's fine. I get it. Like, this also brings back crazy memories. This is good. This is really unique. Honestly, I wore this a lot when I was in Europe, and I find that I feel for some reason more appropriate wearing it in Europe because when I'm in Europe, I also wear my blazers and my fancier coats and my nicer shoes. Here in LA, if you wear a blazer, I literally had a striped, like, casual linen vintage blazer, and I went to rehearsal, and somebody goes, oh, someone's dressed up. A linen blazer? Anyway, so this feels a little out there for LA, unless I were at some, like, ex very exclusive West Hollywood restaurant, which, you know, you don't find me at too much. I am known to, to shut Tom Tom down once in a while, though. Not a joke. Um, okay, Jimmy Choo Illicit. Oh my gosh, this is gonna bring back crazy memories. This was also one of the first I bought when I moved to LA. Th okay, this bottle smells kind of funky. There's like residue on here and I think that's what smells weird, but I think the perfume is fine. This is a great, honestly, young woman clubbing fragrance. It has a little bit of that note that smells like clean hair or rather clean shampoo. Um, as you can tell, I'm not familiar with all the notes of my fragrances and it is what it is. I don't claim to be, like I said, not a snob. I just am calling it like I see it, calling it like I smell it, you know? Ugh, the thing about cutting your bangs during quarantine is that it ruins the slick back ponytail. Okay. Also, did you guys see this? Look at this little barrette. I really dressed up for you. Yeah, this is like, um, this is like young, sexy woman. It's kind of sparkly. It's it's light. It's very, very sweet, but not syrupy. It's like um, before you start getting into like scandal. This is like the younger sister. Like she's 19. She's 19, 20. She can get into like 18 plus clubs now. Um, you know, this is something she pulls out when she has a date. And it's like, ooh, this is my sexy fragrance. So that's at least to me because I got this when I was young, when I was 21. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I've exactly outgrown it. I still really enjoy it. I think if I were going out with girlfriends, like my fr any of my bachelorette parties that I've got coming up for my friends, I would wear this on that. You know, it's just fun. I don't think I expect to, like, hook my future spouse wearing this, but I love it, and the bottle's pretty, and it just brings back really, really, really good memories. <clears throat> Narciso Rodriguez, or this is just Narciso? I don't know. This is what the bottle looks like. I bought this in Austria five or six years ago. Yeah, this is, um, it almost smells piney to me. It smells like clean, <clears throat> like sort of, it's sort of fresh out of the shower in a really masculine way. It's very, it's quite a masculine fragrance, absolutely. A little bit powdery. It smells definitely mature. It sort of has, <clears throat> it sort of has the, um, the makeup or the the similar vibe that I get from some of the Chanel fragrances, the less sweet, fresh ones, like a Chanel number no. five or um, is it Chanel number no. five noir? What is the dark one? I can't remember, but the darker fragrances, not like Chance or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. It's a really, really unique fragrance. Um, I just I I have weird memories attached with this one. So I don't always pull it out, you know? I think I'm gonna have to wait a while to reinvent what this fragrance means to me. Do you guys have that where it's like, this is like, uh, it's just a lot of weird memories in a bottle. Good memories, sort of, but like a weird uh, toxic relationship, let's just be straight up, is in this bottle, so. <laughs> um, Montal Paris van uh, Vanilla Cake Eau de Parfum, this is cool. I bought this one this winter when I was working in Beverly Hills. There was a very fancy niche perfume store and I would go in there all the time and I bought a bunch of fragrances like a ding dong. This smells so good, but it, the lasting power sucks. So I've talked, to, which is shocking from Montal, but like look how chic this bottle is, so dope. Um, but I've talked about this. If, if you want, if you've got an appointment, right? and you're with someone who enjoys vanilla. Most men enjoy vanilla, and I think women is what, it's just, 
it's a sexy fragrance to everyone. Everyone, like vanilla, you think of like, ooh, ooh la la, ra cha cha, you know what I'm saying? So, um, this is great to like put on your body right before your appointment arrives, you know what I'm saying? But otherwise, it's not enough for me to wear this alone. It doesn't last at all, which is disappointing because Montal fragrances are not cheap, sweetie. But whatever. You live, you learn. Another Montal. How gorgeous. Look at this bottle. This is Oud Lavender Eau de Parfum. And does Montal even make Eau de Toilette? I don't even know I'm specifying. Anyway, this is Glamorous Beach. Just don't look at my nails and look, I look glamorous. <laughs> um, this is an incredible fragrance. I have no idea if this is for men or women. I don't know who is, I don't even know if Montal specifies, which is great, because that's BS. Come on, it's 2020. But I smelled this in that perfume shop. I didn't, I didn't really want a lavender fragrance. I love the smell of lavender. I love lavender very much, but not as a perfume. It doesn't make me feel particularly like, you know when you put a perfume on, you're like, this is me. This is my essence in a fragrance. I think that's why I love fragrance so much is it's like, to me, it feels like expressing myself to other people before I say anything. They can smell the, it's like same with a lot of people. They feel that way with clothing, um, and, which is true, but fragrance is like so complex. I don't know. So I don't know why I sprayed this. I think I just like the bottle or I'm like, what does Oud Lavender smell like? And I sprayed this on my skin and I lost my freaking mind. It, <laughs> Andy Bernard, I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. Any Office fans out there? No? Okay, carrying on. So um, I lost my mind. It stayed on me forever. I It stayed on me all through the show that I did that night, all through the night, probably didn't shower after the show. And yeah, um, I shower guys. I. I'm clean. Um, but yes, and the woman doing my hair was like, you smell like a sexy rich daddy. And I was like, that is awesome. So this is a perfume, this is a fragrance you wear when you are asserting yourself. I think ouds are quite like that, you know what I mean? But it's like, I you can't wear this if you're going out with someone who's afraid of a strong, powerful person. Who's afraid of, you know, just like, People without class, people without taste, they're not gonna be here for this. Those are the people that are like, who's wearing that strong perfume? It just, cologne, it's giving me, you know? But if you have that refined palette, if you have taste and class, this is hot. And I think on anybody, this is an unreal fragrance. And the lavender is not that crazy, like on my skin, because again, I would just, I don't wanna wear a perfume that's just lavender perfume. I would also just get lavender oil, but that does nothing for me, like, as far as wearing it as my fragrance. This is hot, this is magical. It's heavy, it's not for hot weather right now. But it also brings back memories of my show in Beverly Hills, or the show I was in, rather, not my show. Oh my gosh, but this is like rich. This is wealth. Wealth, but taste, because it's unique. It's not just like you're wearing a Lilabo Santal, you know what I mean, no offense, but it's unique, okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm not doing my samples. Well, I'll do my little scent birds, but I'm not gonna do, okay. So this is MAC, uh, this is Creme de Nude, and I bought this in October. I love getting perfumes when I do shows. Um, did I mention my, I know I mentioned what I do for a job, but anyway, I do a lot of musical theater, and theater in general. I actually was not, it was doing a straight play when I bought this. But I, my battery! All right, so as I was saying, as my dog eats in the background, I'm sorry, it is what it is. Again, this is Mac Creme de Nude. Um, I guess since Mac is an American company, I can just say Creme de Nude. But um, this is part of their line of fragrances based off of lipsticks. So I've smelled all of them. I like most of them. Um, and most of them, they're not like super unique. I feel like I've smelled the fragrances like that before. Um, but this one just blew my mind. Like this uh, is so good. And the thing about MAC, I, I was like, is this gonna end up getting, giving me a headache? Because Turquatic, I like it. I like the concept of the fragrance and what it smells like, but literally in 10 seconds I get a headache. It's the worst. But this is amazing. This is a gentleman killer. A gentleman killer. Like they will all make comments about it. They will be like, oh, I walked into the room that I could smell you in and I knew you'd been there. Like, trust me, okay? This is so good. It's just, it's maybe like a little burnt sugar. He's really going in right now. It's just a little burnt sugar. It's 
creme brulee-esque. It's creamy. It's a little incense-y. Ugh, it's so good. Love this one. Like, this is just a classic, and it's not that expensive, so I just spray it all over. Um, one by Oisho. This is an Eau de Parfum that I bought at Oisho. This is, it's like a, like a lingerie pajama casual wear store in Europe. And um, I'm not sure what country it like was founded in, but I bought this in Portugal. This is a basically Centol, what is it, 32, whatever. The Centol from Lilabo. This is it. I'm sure it probably, the lasting power is not the same, but I don't love like, well, I love the Santal fragrance, but everybody has it now and everyone knows what it smells like. And so I don't really want to pay for it. So this will do. This is like a literal insane dupe, one by Oisho. And it was cheap. This is another fragrance I got in Beverly Hills this winter. This is Mancera Rose Vanille Eau de Parfum. This is roses and vanilla. Um, and that's exactly what this is. But the thing is, I feel like I might be outgrowing Rose a little bit. Rose was my favorite note for forever and ever and ever and ever. And it's fine. This is pathetic quarantine. I get like one little text on my phone. And I'm like, who is it? It's my literal mom. Y el novio? Donde? La novia? Posible? Dios? Por favor. Anyway, this is really good. Yeah, it's good. It's just like, it doesn't really, if I'm honest, look how gorgeous. It doesn't really feel like me when I wear it, but I still love the fragrance. But I'm not like, this is so me. I'm just like, this is me wearing a beautiful fragrance, you know? But it's my, one of my, like, my two favorite things, basically roses and vanilla. But I've spoken about in other videos that I am an orange blossom biznitch these days. Okay, this is Victoria's Secret Bare Vanilla. I told you I am not a snob, okay? These take me back. So I was born and raised in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, okay? So most of the, my life, I grew up around Woodfield Mall in Schaumburg, if anyone is familiar, and we, I just... I lived the suburban dream, okay? I really did, and I, like, I'm here for the suburbs. I stand the suburbs. So, body mists and, like, Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works, it still gets me. It still gets me, okay? This smells good! It's just, like, this actually is really good. I, the thing about body sprays, though, and the, like, the Victoria's Secret ones, they don't smell fancy, so, like, I would wear this, I would wear this if, oh, so, okay, blah, blah, blah. So my friends and I, we love to go to hotel pools here in LA because a bunch of, there are, are of course fancy hotels here and they all have pools. So you usually just go and if you get a couple drinks, you can stay or you pay an entrance fee, 20 bucks, whatever. Or you're just cute and you bribe them and you get in for free, which happened once, thank you Naveen. Um, so anyway, this is what I would bring in my bag if I was like, okay, we're going to sushi afterward. Oh God, I could just cry thinking about that. Those are my favorite kind of days is spending the day at the, ho the hotel pool and then finding somewhere fun to go for dinner and just loving being around your friends. I cannot wait to have one of those days again. Um, but this is something I would throw in my bag because it's all so plastic. Um, but it, you know, it smells like, ooh, we're going out for like, we're having like a tacky pool day moment and we're going out for a dinner that's like mid-range, you know? Or even if it's not, this, is, this you could totally wear this, you know, any time of year. Um, just to like, you know, spritz on after the pool. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't smell fancy, but it smells really good. This is Good Chemistry Brainiac. This is one that I got from Target. Um, and this smells great. This is really uh, on the masculine side of fragrances. I actually smell lemon, this is so weird. There has to be lemon in there. Clean and practical with a bit of wit. I think it was 20 bucks. They have body sprays as well, but I got the perfume. And yeah, I don't really know how to describe this. It's just, if you like cologne men's-ish fragrances, but it still smells like, a, you know, it's not like this, where it's like, is that a men's cologne? This is like, oh, this is for women, but, ah, oh, you smell a little bit like clean cut and a little bit androgynous. It, this is great, like this is really unique. I love this fragrance, but it's winter for me. Okay, all those samples, goodbye, girlfriend. Um. I have, I have some oils by Kumba Made. See, I told you if I want to smell like lavender, this is lavender lace fragrance oil. I literally have worn this once. 
It's actually really good. It smells like a lavender cream puff. I used to have some body lotion that was, I think, lavender cream puff, and it smelled like this. So this has like a little bit of a whipped moment in there. It's not just like that cutting herbal lavender. So this is good, but like I need to wear it more, but it's winter for me. Scent Bird. This is Toca Simone. I never wear this. I don't really like the Toca fragrances. I think they smell like bathroom spray and they give me a headache. It's either one or the other or both, which is like bad. This is fine, this is white floral. It's just literally not groundbreaking to me. I don't have anything more to say. English Laundry Oxford Bleu Parfum. This is really good. This is a nice summer fragrance. I smell a lot of pineapple right off the bat with this one. It reminds me of G from um, the Gwen Stefani Harajuku Lovers. It was Harajuku Lovers. Those perfumes, the Gwen one that smelled like pineapple, it smelled like this. This is the closest thing. Uh, Kate Spade In Full Bloom. Literally, I think I sprayed this once. I don't even, I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna act like I know what that smells like. I don't, I didn't like it. <laughs> if it has the word bloom in there, I'm probably not gonna like it. It's too floral already. Versace Vanitas. This is good. Honestly, this is freaking obnoxious. This is loud. Versace fragrances are loud as hell. This is good. This is like, I wanna wear a floral and wear something sort of traditionally feminine, but also I'm obnoxious and I wear Versace. Like, Versace. Okay, Versace is obnoxious it just is like it's cool but it's loud versace is always loud it's always like i'm rich do you know that i'm rich look at me you can tell i'm rich and i'm like actually it works sort of the opposite but yes like the gold and the craziness and donatella versace is like this wild woman just like larger than life icon it's just it's a whole vibe versace to me it's not really my vibe. I can appreciate though as a Leo, I'm like, okay, but um, yeah, this is fine. This is just a really obnoxious loud floral. It sort of gives me a headache, but I would, yeah, it kind of gives me a headache. I like it. It's good. Uh, it's just really cutting and really loud, very, uh, you know, a lot of people will be able to smell you. I would probably wear this at a club or something, like not to work, it's just too loud. Okay, we've got a couple more scent birds. This one is Salvatore Ferragamo, Signorina Misteriosa. This is really, really, really sweet, but young, kind of. This is like, um, you, you're like 18 years old and your boyfriend bought you this, like at the mall behind your parents' back and so you hide it in your underwear drawer. And this is what you wear when you go out with him because he loves it and he bought it for you. And it's like not really that sophisticated, but it's like makes you feel sexy. Like that's what this is to me. It's good, but I am just now the connoisseur of sexy sweet fragrances. So like, I don't think I would buy the full bottle. It's just a lot, but I'm sure a lot of young men, younger men in their early twenties would be like, I'm thinking about hooking up. I mean, they always are, but this is like, do you want to hook up with me? That's what this smells like. It's like, let me put this on because I'm trying to hook up, you know? I don't know. It's cool though. Like, I'm like, I like you. You don't try to be what you're not, you know? Prada candy. Listen, I had a long, that is quite alcoholic. It just spilled on my pants. I think my pants are fine. These are very nice Eileen Fisher linen pants from Nordstrom Rack. Oh, it's drying, it's fine. Okay, Prada Candy. I had a whole of, like a whole thing with Prada Candy. So basically our dating history is that, yeah, I knew that Prada Candy was there and I was like, great, everyone says Prada Candy is so hot. I'm like, yes, it looks really hot and the name is hot, but like, it, no, it doesn't really smell like the name to me. I want candy, I want genuine candy. It's, it's, it's confusing. I don't get it. I smelled it in the bottle. I don't get it, I don't get it. Then I had a, we'll call it a one night stand with Prada Candy, which is basically just I sprayed it on myself at Sephora and went about my day. Sweetheart. Now it's all over my fingers. It's real good. I also love Prada Candy Gloss. Prada Candy, I feel like everybody knows what it smells like. I don't need to really describe. It doesn't smell like candy to me at all. It's sweet in a Prada way, okay? So it's like Prada is a little bit sweeter than Chanel base of fragrances but it's not that sweet, you know? It's not the Ferragamo, it's not the Valentino, 
and it's not the Mugler, like that kind of sweet, but it's like what Prada's sweet is. It's good. Uh, Molinar Vanille. This is good. It's literally just a one note vanilla. I don't wear it that often because I think I have other fragrances that are vanilla that I like better or that I reach for more or that have vanilla notes, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's get into my big boy over here. All right, so this is technically a bottle. I've been wearing this every day after the shower and like into bed and all of that. This is Valentino Donna Aqua. This is an eau de toilette. This is an almond fragrance. I was so confused when I opened my fragrance that bottle uh, box. I couldn't remember. I bought a bunch of, or I bought some orange blossom fragrances and I bought some fragrances off of videos uh, suggesting almond fragrances because I wanted almond in my life. I love almond. I love cherry almond. I love like, um, what is that? Almond liqueur. I can't think of it. Anyway, if anyone has ever lived in the Midwest and had something called a pink squirrel, it's a drink, okay? It's not an urban dictionary thing. Listen, creme d'almond? Is that what it is? Just like cream of almond? No, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So I wanted almond stuff because I like it. It smells clean to me, but it's still, it's unique and it's fresh and it's feminine. So this is freaking fantastic. Donna Aqua. Oh, it's so almondy. And you would think like by the looks of it that it would just be super floral or something, especially Aqua. I would have never picked this up if I had not been suggested it from some YouTube videos. Um, because I would have just thought this is going to be a watery fl floral. Absolutely not. Girl, hello. Straight on after the shower, I feel like a goddess. Uh, this is Sexual Sugar by um, Michel Guerlain, which I had never really heard of that house before. It's the same thing as Aqualina Pink Sugar, which I had. I, it's like I got that fragrance when I was 12, and then I got it again when I was like 21 or 22 because I was like, I need to relive my childhood. And then I was like, no, I'm a mature woman now. I'm learning French again, and soon I'll live there, and I can't wear things like pink sugar. So I gave it away to a friend, and I'm freaking pissed. Because I like it. Listen, I'm, I gotta be honest with myself. I'm a suburban Midwestern girl, and I don't like to pretend that I'm not things that, that I am. And pink sugar, there's a big side of me that's pink sugar, if you know what I mean. Okay, I'm actually terrifying. Yeah, this is pink sugar. And I heard that pink sugar's cheaper. Somebody commented that, so sorry. This is just if you want to feel naughty, because you're like, instead of being like, I'm wearing pink sugar, you're like, I'm wearing sexual sugar. But yeah, whatever. Okay, anyway, uh, this is Scandal Jean-Paul Gaultier. Look at this freaking bottle. This is hot. Even if I didn't like this fragrance, this bottle, this bottle is everything. This is, huh, this is so sweet. This is sort of like Signorina Mister. what am I saying? Signorina Misteriosa. Okay, my literal neighbor is like watching this as if it's a movie. Hello, welcome to my channel. This is sweet as frick, you guys. I can't, is this, I think this is, there's some orange blossom and honey. I think I might be mixing up, but like, I don't know what, but it's just syrupy sweet. Like, the smelling this is, it's amazing and it's like really bold and it's like, dang, you are just out there tonight. You are just telling everybody, this is the equivalent of like, you know, wearing one of those little lingerie bodysuits to the club, which I have done, you know? But you're causing a scandal. You're like, yeah, I'm wearing lingerie in real life, deal with it, okay? This is the equivalent of that. And it's also sort of a little bit of a vibe of I had too much gummy candy and I'm gonna puke. That feeling. But like, you know, sometimes you wanna confuse, confuse the person you're seducing. Like, do you wanna eat me or are you repulsed by me? It's often, it's often a bit of both when people are talking to me. Okay, Hugo Boss. Uh, the scent, private accord. Boss, Hugo, whatever. This. The bottle, I love it. I love it, I love it. The fragrance. Probably my favorite fragrance, like normal, I don't, is this, no, designer. Designer fragrance I've ever smelled. Yeah, this is, this would be my favorite designer. Ariana Grande Cloud is my favorite celebrity, and Insolence by Guerlain is probably currently my favorite. Anyway, whatever. This is so freaking good. And honestly, I got this because of Jeremy Fragrance commenting, you know, he kind of started the craze about it. And yes, I will say right off the bat, the lasting power sucks. But 
like I've said in previous things, if you've got appointments, if you know what I'm saying, or if you just, like, it's worth it to me. Yes, it will wear off. It's not something you need to, like, you'll wear to the club and be smelling all the time, but I can also fit this in my purse. But, like, if you're going on a date and you know that right, you know, you spray it on and your date gets there and they hug you, they're going to smell it for like a little bit. You get in their car, they're going to smell it. It's worth it. It's that hot of a fragrance. It's so good. Yes, the lasting power sucks. Um, and the notes are apparently like the main notes are mandarin and chocolate, which I have already said in a previous video that that sounds like my literal nightmare. I hate oranges and chocolate. I hate, I had one terrible orange and dark chocolate candy. I don't even like, I hate that concept. I hate it. So I don't know why I bought this, but I was like, whatever, we're just gonna do it. And I'm so glad I did because it is absolutely heavenly. And once again, my camera is going to die, so we're going to have to jump back. I will first talk about Michael Kors Sexy Amber. I was psyched about this. A lot of people like it, they've been commenting. It's better on the skin, whatever. It, I, don't, I just don't think it's me. I think it's really hot. Don't even take offense to this, guys, because I still wear it and it's a good fragrance. This is hot 40 something suburban mom who wears like David Yurman. This is just giving me a throwback hot suburban mom who like has, like gets really expensive haircuts. Yeah, it's just not really me, but I would definitely wear it. It reminds me of a um, Jack Wills fragrance I had once. It's good and, and on some people I'm sure it's intoxicating. I just think maybe Amber is not the best on me. Um, gonna charge my camera again, so I'll be back. Hi, what's up? I replaced the batteries in my camera and I know that changing the angle again on you is gonna piss you off. So I'm standing and we're gonna forget where I was sitting before in that exact angle and now we're gonna sit down again, find a new angle, cause this is a new time for us, okay? And we'll be all fine with it. That's right. Okay. I left off, we were talking about Michael Kors Sexy Amber. Yeah, now, I'm, half of these fragrances are like on my nose now. It actually smells pretty good. It's just not the most unique, but this, I would, ugh, this I would bring home to Chicago for Christmas time or Thanksgiving. This is not sexy to the point where it's like weird to wear around family, like Scandal to me, because um, fragrances just speak volumes and certain fragrances are communicating certain things. This is just communicating like, I'm mature. I have I have some pretty good taste, don't you think? And uh, I'm home for the holidays. I'm wrapped in a sweater. This is holiday, holiday, holiday to me. I'm just eating the rest of my gummy vitamin. Elisab, girl of now. This is really good. This is almond, right? Y'all were... This actually, just now smelling it, gave me um, a, uh, Alien by Mugler. A little bit. Is an alien almond or something? I don't know. I know what alien smells like very well. <sighs> That's just another story I'll have to save for another time. Somebody sort of ruined alien for me because it was in a... Well, it's not a PG-13 story, but anyway, whatever. This is great. This is really good. I, I've been wearing it lately and I think it's too hot. It's too syrupy because it's extremely sweet, but what a beautiful bottle, huh? Also, guys, I removed my nail polish so that you don't have to look at hideous nails. Um, beautiful bottle. This has been sort of giving me a headache lately, I think maybe because it's been hot. Um, I don't know, but I love the fragrance. Sometimes the chemistry just gives me a headache, but that's all right. I'll figure it out. I'll find a way to love you. Okay. Um, this is... Fleur de, oh, de jasmin. Jasmin, is that how you say it? I've never said it in French, jasmin? Yeah, Soli Notes. These are also from Target. Someone has told me that they're made to mix. So I think they're pretty much Soli Notes if you would think like when you have a Soli in an orchestra score, that's the only person playing, right? They're playing a solo. So these are made to mix. Jasmin, I keep by my bed to use as a uh, linen spray because I like the smell but on me I love the jasmine smell but there's something really powdery about it that makes me also think of bathroom spray again there must be some something that always makes me think of that anyway it's fine it's a good jasmine fragrance I suppose there's definitely better um, but these are cheap the one I do love from Soli Notes I'm trying to try the yuzu and the grapefruit and all that but 
I have Fleur d'Oranger, which is orange blossom. And as I was saying, orange blossom is possibly my favorite note in perfume now. This is just pure orange blossom, sweet. I mean, it's it's in bloom all over LA right now. Every I walk mochi and I am in heaven and I just stop and smell the orange blossom, okay? That's, and I'm not that type of person to just be like, let me just stand, like I'm anxious, I'm in a rush, but orange blossom stops me in my tracks every time and I smile. I smile when I smell orange blossom. Like, I'll be walking and it'll just hit me and I'll immediately smile and it's like hearing the voice of an old friend. It's like, where, where are you? Like, I literally am looking to find where the orange blossom tree is or the orange tree and then I find it and I smile and I think about one day when I'll have an orange tree in my yard and um, I have a really emotional connection to orange blossom. So I'm actually thinking of finishing up. I got this tattoo years ago with intention to have a half sleeve. I don't know. I'm not like obsessed with the idea right now. But if I got a half sleeve, it would have to include orange blossom. Moving on. I'm talking too long. Zoella Sweet Inspirations Fragrance Body Mist. This is from Ulta. This was super cheap. It smells so good. It's something I always throw in my bag. I wore it after uh, when I was doing a show in Utah. I would always put this on after the shows when I was sweaty on the way, like on the shuttle back to the apartments because I wanted to smell good. And people loved it. They were loving it. And I was like, guys, it's cheap. It's great. It used to have a cap, I think. But yeah, this is so good. It's, what does it smell like? It's just vanilla. But it's not too gourmand. Like, it doesn't truly smell like icing or anything. It's just a delicious, sweet scent. Not floral at all. It's very, very um, b sort of baked goods. But not in an extreme way, again, that you truly smell like a cake. Um... Burberry, someone said, the English say Burberry. I know, but I don't feel right saying that. Burberry, I say Burberry. But Burberry London, this is really good. It's a white flower fragrance. I got this because my best friend Bernadette uh, used to wear this in high school and I wanted to confirm that this was the one. And it's great. And on me, it smells a little grape-ish, which I don't think is a note, but it's funny because Bernadette's favorite note in, or Bernadette's favorite flavor is grape. Like grape shave ice, grape Gatorade, she likes, so it just reminds me of her. Um, sorry. The star of my collection right now, okay? Insolence by Guerlain. This is the Eau de Toilette. Beautiful bottle, I love the pink juice, it's stunning. I first smelled this my first week working at Disneyland. I am, uh, well, before I was furloughed, I am um, an Elsa in the Frozen show at Disneyland here in California. And uh, there is, I work in Disney California Adventure, but in Disneyland, I can go in between the parks and stuff because I'm an employee. In Disneyland, there's a perfume shop, a beautiful perfume shop. They have Guerlain, they have Aqua di Parma, they have Givenchy, Dior, all this stuff. And it's heaven, and I especially love Guerlain. And I smelled this. They were like, oh, this one is a Disney exclusive. I still don't know what it means, people, because I found this online. But they said it's a Disney exclusive. I don't know. It was like some kind of selling point, whatever. And I smelled it, and I was like, eh. And then I put it on my skin. So I, like, immediately was like, nah. Like, wrote it off because it's not my type of fragrance. It's not vanilla, and it's not this, and it's not that, and it's not orange blossom. And I just wrote it off. And it's so good. And on the skin, it dries down. It's almost kind of papery. Oh my God, it is amazing. I spray this in my hair every night before I go to bed. I've been wearing perfume every day during this lockdown, by the way, duh. Um, and it's helping a lot. But this is incredible. And apparently this is candied violets. I don't know violet enough to know if that's true, but this is extremely unique. Extremely, it's just magic in a bottle. This is this is stunning it's so oh my god i love this fragrance it's me but it's a me that like i would have written off. you know what i mean like it's some it's you'd pick this up and be like really this is in gabby's collection not a game changer but you know what i mean it's like unexpected and it brings out a different side of me it's so feminine but it's strong and it's unique but it's and it's classic and it's just like everything I want to be as a 25 year old woman right now. So this is like, I can tell this is going to be really special to me for the rest of my life. It's going to bring up a lot of great memories. Dolce & Gabbana Intense Eau de Parfum. 
this is really good i bought this as a blind buy technically but i was trying to figure out if it was um this fragrance i had worn when i was at um the abbey which is a gay club here in <clears throat> in west hollywood i was out it was years ago i was like super like drunk and partying and it was a fun night and they had this um they had this area in the bathroom. I mean, there's designer perfume everywhere and you have mints and you have other things you might need for the rest of the night. Like they have it all there. And then the attendant that gives you the towel, it's a whole experience. So I sprayed this on me that night and I just was in love the rest of the night. And I was like, shoot, I was a little too tipsy to remember what the bottle was, but I remembered it was a big dark red bottle and this is totally it. So what does this smell like? Like, I don't know. It's, I don't even know, I have it out right now, but it's not a summer fragrance to me. But it's just elegant. This is not wild enough. I wouldn't wear this to a gay club again. Like, it's not wild enough and fun enough. But that night, well, maybe. I was feeling myself. This is just a really sexy, womanly fragrance. Um, and it's not, to me, very floral. So, I love it. Another orange blossom is Roger Gaillet Paris. This is... Um, Fleur d'Oranger, I'm pretty sure it has the same name. I got this at a pharmacy in Paris two years ago, three years ago. And this is orange blossom, but it's like um, cutting, you know? It's, it's more like the Neroli type of orange blossom, how you smell it. You know what I mean? How Neroli is more citrusy and cutting, and this is like sweet. You're passing the tree, and it's like in the breeze. This is like clean. Um, this would be good for work. You know, this is like brunch with the girls or uh this is daytime and it like very innocent this is a very innocent fragrance you know shopping with mom or uh yeah that's a great one or like family day in the park or um like going to the dog park with your friends and they're like something like that you know this is very innocent and clean and like respectable you know but casual it's totally casual Hannah Mori Butterfly. This is the Eau de Parfum. I got this in um, <laughs> in uh, Santee Alley here in LA, so I'm pretty sure this is uh, a knockoff. But the juice, it smells exactly the same and the lasting power is amazing. But like this bottle is really cheap. The perfume is fine, okay? And they gave me a good price. Anyway, um, yeah, this is so good. I smelled this for the first time when I was probably 17 or 18 and I thought about it for years and I would always spray this on me when I would go into Was it the Neiman Marcus? I don't know one of the fancy Shops in Boston. I would always spray this on me and then I would spray it on myself too when I moved out here in LA I would spray it and you can't really find it anymore So I knew I loved it and I would always put it on on me and it lasted forever and it smelled good on me so I just decided to get it last year when I was down in Santiali filming a music video and it's great. It's um, I don't know the notes. To me it's vanilla, powdery, very very sweet, mature, a little syrupy. Um, yeah, it's right up my alley. But it definitely smells mature. You know what I mean? Like it's re it's it's this it's almost the sickeningly sweet fragrance for the more mature woman. So it's not like pink sugar and it's not like ooh candy, but it is quite sweet. But you know, like a 50 year old woman, a 60 year old woman and older could still wear that without it being like, why are you wearing a little girl's fragrance, you know? Uh, Ralph Lauren Blue, my aunt, my Tia Gloria first gave me a bottle of this because I smelled it on her at a family gathering and she smelled ridiculously amazing. She brought down the bottle and she gave the rest to me. And then I bought this in Santee Alley as well when I got this, which this is also like, this cap is totally cheap. Like, I don't know what the deal is, but it smells the exact same and it stays the same. What is the, what are the notes? You would think by looking at this, right? I would have never even tried this had my aunt not been wearing it because this looks like it's gonna smell like some some typical, I don't know, just flowers and cotton. Like it just looks like it's gonna smell like one of those clean laundry fragrances, I don't know. But it is, oh my God, it's magical. It's magic. It's, ugh, what is it? It's like powdery and and sweet but in a, in a natural way, not in a sort of syrupy or artificial way, which some of these are, which is fine. But this is sweet in a natural way. This is just so appropriate for so many things. It's appropriate for work, it's appropriate for a daytime date. 
uh, for a nighttime summer date if you if you like something a little lighter um, oh I can imagine wearing like a linen top and matching like beige all beige linen with my hair long like on on somebody's boat oh, it's so good I love it this is one of the Elixir Chanel by Guerlain, which this one is floral romantique. So I thought they were, all, this was just called Elixir Chanel, but they have a whole line. So this is floral romantique. This is amazing. This is a hand-me-down. This is amazing. I freaking love Guerlain. Honestly, they can basically do no wrong. This is really floral, but I don't know why I like it because it smells more mature. It doesn't smell like a floral that you would find at Sephora or Ulta or a floral that anyone would expect, you know? It smells mature. This smells like somebody in 1920 could have worn it, but so it smells old as far as the fragrance. Like it smells like it's not, it didn't come out in 2020. And I love that. It just smells like it has history and the bottle is stunning. And I love this. And it, it, this is also sort of grapey. It's that like juicy floral. It's not, it's not heady at all to me. I love it. 1932 Chanel. This is a jasmine fragrance. Speaking of jasmine. But this is very Chanel. This is like acidic. I'm not sure. I know a lot of uh, Chanel fragrances have apple cider vinegar uh, as a, a note. And I feel like it's got to be somewhere in here. This is giving me great memories because my brother bought this for me in Vegas for my 24th, 24th? No, 23rd birthday. Shoot, life is blurring. I think my 23rd birthday, we were so drunk, so drunk in Chanel. That's when I, like, whatever. We went on a shopping spree. It was amazing. He was like, just get it. It smells good. Just get it. Like, he's so, so, it was so funny and he was so generous. So it's great memories. It's a birthday fragrance. It's a Vegas fragrance, which I would never say this is a Vegas fragrance. Fragrance, but I had like a pretty classy time in Vegas. Oh, I feel like this is so good with the ponytail. Like this is so Chanel. Ugh. Oh, anyway, big old bottle, beautiful bottle, and this is Jasmine, but with that base of Chanel. I I would smell this with my eyes closed and know that Chanel made it. And same with all of their, these special fragrances that look like this, I can't remember what the line is called. Um, but yeah, they all have that Chanel trademark base. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit cutting. It's not syrupy sweet at all. This is elegant. I should use this more, but it's so elegant that I almost always feel like, oh, I don't have an occasion to wear this. This is so, I mean, maybe my own bridal shower or like um a baby shower like it's it's elegant and it's beautiful and it's meaningful like i i would wear it to just a cake like not some brunch where you're gonna go get sloppy drunk this is yeah like baby shower or the birth of a baby or you're gonna meet a well i don't even know if you wear fragrance for that but like i don't know this is just very this is like a real life princess you know not like a disney princess like a real monarch like a real digni di clearly i'm not from royal blood but anyway it's gorgeous it's gorgeous ariana grande cloud everyone talks about this i freaking love it i also love the bottle because i love a bit of tackiness okay this is so good like goodbye toasted marshmallows this is also a man killer men are so simple you don't have to spend a lot of money to impress most of them, unless they're like, I guess, a fragrance expert. But I'm telling you, this is a man killer. This and Mac Creme de Nude, pow pow, you can take out any man this side of the Mississippi. Nukes Paris, I bought this in Portugal also, but I have loved this for a long time. I tried it for the first time uh, in Paris a long time ago. Um, this is Prodigieux Le Parfum. So this is, ah. Oh, this is iconic. If you know Nukes, if you know their huile, um, huile prodigieux, like their oil, it smells exactly like this. Most of their, a lot of their products that are in the prodigieux line smell like this. And it's sunscreen and I, I, I don't know. I don't know what this is, honestly, but I love this bottle. It gives me kind of body shop vibes and I'm like, ooh, elegant, but like inexpensive. I'm a suburb girl, I'm telling you. but. This is just so good. This is if you want that summer beach scent, 
or a, a scent to transport you to the beach. I wore this the other day and it put me in a really good mood. This is sunny day, sunny, sunny day, gorgeous, put in the hair for sure scent. You, I mean, you've got to smell this. You've got to smell this. It's, it's sunscreen, sunshine beach, but classy and French. Okay, Victoria's Secret Banana Twist. Honestly, this is so unique. This smells like toasted brown sugar bananas. Like you are, it smells like tasting a banana that has been fried in a pan with brown sugar and syrup and it's just so sweet. I don't smell the lime at all. It says there's lime, but this is the only time I've ever worn banana in a fragrance and it's amazing. It really on my skin just kind of smells like burnt vanilla and people love this too. Victoria's Secret Midnight Petals. This one is great as well. I love this one. This is really fresh. Again, these are not fancy. I would not wear this to a nice dinner or really on a date. No, no, I wouldn't. But like, you know, after, what would I wear this for? Yeah, this would have to be like after a long day at the pool or the beach or on vacation, like just going to the buffet in the morning before you hit the pool uh, in Hawaii on vacation. I'm just making up these crazy things. But yeah, it's so good though. It's like really fresh. It's sweet floral. I, it's, it's, it's not anything I haven't smelled before, but it's like a spot on very nice job Victoria's Secret for a body spray. It's like the most basic feminine I'll go. It's like super basic and I like it. Like as in I'm a basic girl. Like that's what that smells like. Couple more. Joe Malone Red Roses. This is good. It's just so rose. And at one point I was obsessed with this. And now, eh. I mean, it is accurate red rose. You are sticking your nose in the velvety petals of a red rose. It's great. It literally smells like I used to have a rosary that was red velvet and it, sm it was rose scented. That's like so Mexican to me. And I used to play with it all the time only because it smelled like rose. So it just is like, reminds me of that. It smells just like that because it also smelled a little old, this rosary, because we would keep it in a box. So for some reason it just smells like that to me. So I love this, but I, I don't love it on me as a fragrance. But I, I'll keep it around because I, I do love rose and it's a true rose. All right, we've got two more. Uh, Dominique Ropion, Carnal Flower. This is from Edition de Parfum, Frederick Mal. So I got this at Barney's here in LA, but I got this as a sample. I don't even know where I got the sample, but um, it's a cool bottle, right? The sample was a bright, like a tomato bright red sample bottle. And it was like, bam, it caught my attention. And the name, Carnal Flower. So I really wish this were a bright red as well, but all the, all the perfumes in this line look like this and it's fine, it's, it's classy. This is awesome. This is awesome. I get complimented on this from women all the time. This isn't really a man killer, but it's, it's for women because a lot of women just love white floral. This is so white floral. This is like throwing every single white flower in your face. It's unmistakable. But, but it is sexy though. There's something, there's something else there carnal you know they put maybe they put musk in there i don't know but it is it is very sexy but it is a white floral so you have to be for me i have to be very very cautious not to go crazy with the spraying because i will get a headache last thing is a roller oil that i have been using for five or six years this is no longer honestly since senior year of high school probably i think that's when i got it so seven years what I can't do math. Seven years. Kumba made. It's another oil. I got. Um, I get them from Sprouts. This is called Persian Garden. I don't know what is in this. I don't know what. I don't know what sorcery they have done to create this. This is nuts. This is nuts. It reminds me of another fragrance oil I had called Eleven Eleven, and I got from Credo. And it's like a natural one. Well, I guess this is too, but it it's the same. It's like wet, wet grass. It's that addictive sort of smell of like the, after it rains outside, that smell. So it's not addictive in the sense of like, ooh, that's candy and like, mmm, sexy smell. It, it's just like, I can't get enough. This scent, scent is amazing. Like that's what this is. 
And my friend Abby told me she loves this and she's like, whenever I smell this, that's you. That's you to me. And I will always remember that. So I freaking love this and these oils are cheap. So we got through it. My camera didn't die again. That was my perfume collection. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me a comment if you tried any of these or if you have suggestions based on my taste. Um, and if I said I didn't like things that you guys didn't like, you, we all know taste is subjective. I'm not trying to insult you at all. Um, cause I'm sure, I mean, somebody told me that Scandal or Girl of Now smelled like pee on them. So it's fine. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you in my next one. Love you very much. Mwah! Bye guys.